Hello, fourth grade Adams. My name is Miss Kay, and I am going to be doing the read alouds for our CKLA lessons so that you can do the work at home with the help of me and, of course, with your teachers on Zoom. So we're going to begin with our first unit of the year, and we are going to learn all about ecology. So before we start, we have some vocabulary to go over and then we'll get started on chapter one. So our first word is ecology, and that is the study of relationships between living things and their environment. So if someone was studying ecology, they would look really closely at a group of living things and how their surroundings um, helped them and how they helped their surroundings. We'll learn more about that in the chapter. Environment is just the natural surroundings. An ecosystem is everything in a particular environment, both living and non-living. An organism is a living thing. To depend on means to need or to rely on. Survival is the ability to continue living, to stay alive. Pollen is a yellow substance made by plants that is carried to other plants of the same kind to make seeds. Survive is to continue living. Skitter is to move quickly across something. And then sprout means to begin to grow. All right, so chapter one is called Living Things and Their Habitats. Ecology is about nature and life. It is about the relationships between living things and their environment. Someone who studies ecology is an ecologist. An ecologist studies living things and the way they relate to their surroundings. This toad is part of an ecosystem. An ecosystem is like a habitat where an organism lives, but it includes many habitats plus the non-living systems that support them. In an ecosystem, each living thing depends on other living and non-living things for survival. Insects find food and shelter on trees and in moss. The toad finds those insects and eats them. The toad depends on rainfall to supply a place to lay eggs. One day, maybe a snake will eat the toad. These are the kinds of things ecologists like to think about. The bee is attracted to the flower's bright color. The bee eats the flower's sweet nectar. The flower is also full of pollen. Pollen is a substance that looks like dust. When the bee buzzes off, it carries some of the flower's pollen away on its feet and wings. To make seeds, flowers must share their pollen with other flowers. Flowers do not have hands or feet or any other way to get their pollen to other flowers, so they depend on bees and other insects to spread it for them. The bee needs the flower in order to survive. The flower needs the bee and other insects in order to survive. These are perfect examples of the kind of relationships ecologists like to study. And there's our picture of the bee. It says the bee needs the flower in order to survive. And we also just learned that it's the same way opposite. The flower also needs the bee because the bee spreads the pollen and makes more of that kind of flower. Here is another living thing you probably recognize, a squirrel. She is a little surprised to see you. This squirrel does not see people every day. She is not one of those squirrels you see skittering along branches in the park or your backyard. Instead, this squirrel lives deep in the forest. She has a nest of leaves and sticks somewhere way high up in this tree. In the springtime, the mother squirrel shared her nest with her babies. But now it is late summer. The babies have left the nest. The mother has the nest to herself. It is time for her to gather food for the winter. So here's the squirrel. The caption says, this squirrel is surprised to see you. Typically, this squirrel stays hidden. It's not like the normal gray squirrels that we see all over the place. 
This squirrel's favorite food is acorns, which are nuts from oak trees. In the summer, it is easy for the squirrel to go out and find plenty of acorns, but the squirrel must also gather and save food for winter. In the winter, acorns won't be as easy to find. The squirrel uses her little paws to dig a hole in the ground. She buries an acorn. Over the summer and early fall, she may, bear, she may bury hundreds of them. Then, whenever she gets hungry during the winter, she can crawl out of her nest and go dig up an acorn. It is easy to see how the squirrel depends on the tree. She uses the squirrel for both food and shelter. However, the squirrel also gives something to the tree. How do you think the squirrel remembers where she buries all these acorns? Can she smell them? Does she put a little stick in the ground to mark each acorn? Does she draw a map on the back of a leaf? Actually, she does not remember where she planted all those acorns. She forgets a lot of them. Many of those acorns will remain in the ground right where she buried them. Acorns are nuts. Nuts are seeds with shells covering them. Like most seeds, acorns need to be planted in order to sprout and grow. Well, the squirrel did the oak tree a favor by planting all those acorns and then forgetting about them. If the acorns weren't buried, they probably would not sprout and might be eaten by another animal. The squirrel and the oak tree are each doing what they do to survive and produce young. The tree grows leaves and acorns. The squirrel uses the leaves for shelter and the acorns for food. This makes it possible for the squirrel to survive and produce young. Also, because the squirrel buries acorns, the oak tree is able to produce young too. This is how things work in an ecosystem. This is what ecology is all about. All right, now we have our comprehension questions. Um, as always with these questions, make sure to go back into the text if you need to, find the part they're talking about, and locate the answer. Number one says, ecologists study the blank between living things and their environment. Number two, what does skittering mean on page six? Number three, what does sprout mean on page seven? Number four, bees and blank depend on one another for survival. Number five, how does a squirrel depend on an oak tree for survival? And number six is true or false. The squirrel also helps the oak tree survive. All right, that's all I've got today. I will see you next time for lesson two. Bye, Adams.